Hi, I'm Jerry Lim with Finish a Quilt. I am going to try to do a series kind of like cross stitchers do with um, their floss tube with quilters because I think that as quilters we all want to see what other people are working on, other finds that people have, and what they're working on and what kind of um, retreats are coming, what type of um, products we're using, new notions, anything like that. Um, so I thought this would be fun. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it. I don't know what we would call it, but you're welcome to leave me some ideas down at the comments. Um, the cross stitchers called theirs floss tube. And the reason I know that is, is I have started uh, some cross stitch because I love hand work. I love to bind quilts, but I can't make them fast enough to bind them. Um, and I thought it would be fun, just something that you can take and go, not very big. And then as you start following it, you see these people that make these uh, wonderful tapestry-like pictures. And it's really changed the whole way I'm thinking I'm going to decorate my house because I keep picturing these beautiful things that these people are making. And it's like a whole different, I could say rabbit hole of money you can spend. Um, there's different types of flosses, different types of um, linen. Um, they call it fabric, what you actually cross stitch on. And I will tell you that I cross stitched when I was probably 10 or 11, and I'm currently not 10 or 11, I'm 48, and I thought, this will be really neat, and I have learned so much, and these floss tube people are just so talented. I don't even know how they see. I feel like I need a seeing eye dog and some braille, but I follow um, Brenda and the Serial Stitcher, and um, her name's Laura. I'm kind of like a serial st uh, starter when it comes to quilting. But she said, get a light with the big magnifying glass and get some readers, which I wear glasses, but for these videos, you have to have like a, a light so you don't look like you're in a dungeon. And it drives me crazy to see that light in my glasses. So I take them off. Um, while I'm talking to you. So what I thought I would start with is to kind of tell you a little bit about what I have, and they're called WHIPS, Works in Progress, and um, you might be interested. I'll let you know about the designer, the fabric, anything I might know about them, and um, we'll see how this goes. I think you might like it. The first thing I have um, as a work in progress, uh, I'm working on Bloomtopia, which is through Fat Quarter Shop. And it is um, where they ask for donations for the um, Make-A-Wish Foundation. And that's out of, I think it's Central Texas or something like, it's out of, it's down there. And um, you can get on the Fat Quarter Shop and donate even if you're not doing it. Uh, they also have a stitch along that I'm doing, so I'll show you that maybe if I brought it here. Uh, um, this is the quilt, and it's by, uh, the fabric is from Chelsea and, I can't remember, Sherry and Chelsea. Sherry's the mom, Chelsea's the daughter. Um, and I have done one and two. Um, I will tell you, since I have been watching Kimberly Jolly on the Fat Quarter Shop, I have started st uh, starching my fabric. I never used to, and it just looks so much better. And it really is so much easier to sew. It keeps everything together, and you're not, like, guessing or trying to straighten it out as you're sewing. Um, I actually got the kit, and let me show that to you. As I bend down, you guys can see my beautiful quilt that's behind me. I got this box, and it was the kit, and everything came in the kit. Gorgeous fabrics, and as I've used it, I've kind of um, starched it. But I also ordered the backing. Um, that 
was a whole separate thing and it's really cute. It's going to be the 2020 on the back in a light blue. There's so much fabric left over. I think I'm going to try to put some pinwheels and space them throughout. The only thing I will say is, as a long arm quilter, I do not care when I, because I free motion. I don't do the um, pro stitcher, which is, you know, like an edge to edge design. I do actually free motion. And sometimes if you don't open up your seams in the back, it makes it a pain to, to quilt. But uh, I think I'm going to put some pinwheels in the back of this. And that was separate could do this all like as you bought the quilt packet you bought the whole thing they gave you the book so you could do start to finish and I've seen some people that actually have theirs quilted and done um, I thought I would kind of stick with what uh, the fat quarter shop is releasing because I lose interest and that's probably why I have some whips um, that still need to be done but I will tell you two years ago I bit off a lot more than I could chew and I had all of this I bought this big laundry basket and I couldn't I mean it was like running over and I thought I'm going to get these done so last year I focused on working through getting things done um, I made a lot of bags and I was very disappointed with the the lack of quilts that I actually made and completed last year so I'm not too bad on my whips, um, but you know, could be better, I guess. But I like having a lot of different things. That way, when you get tired of working on something, or some days you don't feel like piecing, some days you don't feel like quilting. I mean, you've got a lot to, to vary. And now I've thrown cross stitch in there. The other one, um, another one that I have is called Esther's Bloomers. And it has um, beautiful fabric from Kimberly Deal, I think is how you say her name. Um, this is called Esther's Bloomers. It's a medallion quilt. Everything kind of goes around this. And here's some of the other little blocks, and they're all different. Um, I still need to do the uh, blanket stitch around here. There is a lady on Facebook um, in the group that we're in for this and she did hers uh, with black thread oh my gosh. Gorgeous. I just don't think I'm that precise with the blanket stitch on my machine to make it that beautiful um, and I definitely know that it wouldn't be that beautiful if I did it by hand because even though I try to stay consistent with the size of my stitches it would drive me crazy um, I kind of want to take this out so you guys can see without that bag glaring in your face. These beautiful fabrics. And let's see. There you go. Isn't that gorgeous? I love them. So this quilt, we are only on month two. And um, I haven't done month two. I'm still on month one. love the fabric then I have one that is called all's hallow eve or halloween fig and the fabric line is all hallows eve the quilt is actually called halloween fig and it's through the fat quarter shop and I think we're on like month eight we're, we're almost we're wrapping it up we're getting close to it but as you can see this fabric is so neat, feels so good, and it's so unique for Halloween. In the fact that um, you have all the beautiful colors of Halloween, but in such traditional patterns, so that you can literally, um, you could use this fabric on anything. Now I'm currently doing the block of the month, and as you can tell, with this haul of fabric. Um, Fat Quarter Shop sends you plenty of fabric if you do their um, blocks of the month. Here's some of them. And like I said, I have started starching since I started watching um, Kimberly Jolly. And this is um, applique 
I did a needle, um, um, needle turn applique. I wish I'd have done it like um, Lori Holt, which is she puts um, right sides together of stabilizer, sews around it, and then flips it from the back inside out so you have real smooth edges. I wish I'd have done that, but I didn't. So the next time I'll do that. But as you can tell, you can see all the beautiful fabrics and how they're the colors of Halloween, but not. But this gorgeous quilt. Um, and even cut little teeny stars. And see the, how nice. So this fabric line is from Moda and um, Fig Tree. And it was printed last year. And they hardly ever do reprints, but they are reprinting this fabric uh, because it did so well. And I do know um, there's another block of the month, I think, that's going to go on with it. But I will have the whole product line here. Um, the whole fabric line, I should say, instead of product line. Um, it is due in April, I believe. And uh, you'll be able to find it on my website. And... I just think I'm excited to kind of do a different pattern with it or maybe um, like that swoon pattern that's from Thimble Blossoms, the Bonnie and Camille uh, daughter. That would be pretty with that fabric as well. And then I've got a Build-A-Quilt that's through Angela Walters and um, she's quilting as my therapy. This um, pattern she designed and it's really kind of neat um, I go to several of her retreats every year and she usually introduces them so that we can kind of see what's going to be released in a couple of weeks and um, this one I picked there was three different colorways this time I picked the urban because I love this fabric I thought this fabric was so neat so I had the I took the liberty I will say of changing a little bit. I changed this fabric, and I put a pinwheel in this, just because I love pinwheels. So that is this one, and <coughs> this one's monthly, and we're on month four. Angela has some really great people working for, her and. Um, I would hate to guess how long I have um, been going down to Missouri. I would say three or four years. But Joni is um, the lady who helps Angela with this, and she does uh, videos. So when you join one of Angela's Build a Quilts, um, you get a private Facebook group, and Joni then shows you um, how to do each block if you don't know already. Um, I will tell you that it's really beginner friendly. You wouldn't really need the videos if you've been um, quilting for any amount of time, but it does help. Like Jenny will say, you might want to read the whole bit of instructions before you start this because, so those are nice little tips that you go, hmm, I probably would have done that and then not had enough fabric. And so those are my works in progress that I have. I have a couple of other quilts that I have fabric for. I thought I would save that for another a video uh, so you could actually see how these things are packaged and oh my gosh. So I think I have three or four of those like quilts that I have every as uh, cross stitchers say I've got it kitted. I've got all of the fabric the patterns and it's all organized. I just haven't done it. I haven't gotten to it and I don't know when I'll get to it. This quote behind me is by Anna Maria Horner. It was a block of the month that I did when I told you I got into my, I got too much stuff going. I did it like two years ago. Well, I didn't do it. I bought it. So um, I guess it was about six, six months ago. I decided that I would, um, go ahead and put it together. Well, I love the colors. I love the design. It's designed by Anna Maria Horner as well. So I went ahead and put it together. 
in like a week. I have it, um, I took my long arm and did a couple designs, but mainly just kind of fancy basted it, went in the ditch, um, because I would love to hand quilt this with the large running stitch. But your tendency when you pick up a needle and thread is to make the stitches as small as you can. And that's not really what you wanna do because I've bought a lot of really neat um, ombre threads that will change colors as it goes or stand out in certain spots. And you wanna have a decent stitch. I do follow a lady called um, Susie Quilts. She's a modern quilter and she has a lot of little tips and hints. And if you like modern quilts that are, you know, simple, solid designs, um, very neat and clean, she has a couple quilts that's really nice. And um, every so often she'll do like a quilt along with one of her. Uh, but I love to follow her. She's really funny too. I mean, her and her baby and the dog are, are hilarious. But I have, I regress here. She's the one who I followed trying to figure out what type of needles I needed. Um, I've tried ballpoint. I've tried different type of uh, tapestry needles because the little tiny quilting needles are too small to go through that and do a running stitch. But you can't have it too big or you can't get, you know, the movement in and out. So that's why this one is not done and it's somewhat done but it's gorgeous so i thought i would put a really pretty quilt behind me so you guys could see it and the beautiful fabric because i love fabric so as i said i had started um and decided to pick up cross stitch so my first cross stitch which i didn't bring up is the bloomtopia stitch along through fat quarter shop and um it was hard and I like I said I have not done it since I was about 10 or 11 and I'm 48 and I found it very difficult because everything's so small and there's a lot of color changes and so we're on the second release the third release is next Sunday that I, I don't want to tell you what date it's Sunday and they're going to release a, a new section of it. And um, I did not use the DMC that they called for. I used um, the color works that um, the house, the real housewives of Cross Stitch. Now I got to remember Chelsea and Priscilla. And um, I like their, uh, those color works, how they're kind of, they're muted and they go into different, not really colors, but the hues. So like if you were doing bricks, the bricks have different shades of red. Um, if you were doing a door, you could do the browns and it would kind of look like wood. Um, so I did my Bloomtopia in that. Um, I'll show that to you next week or the next video that I do. And then, as I told you, I love Halloween. And um, I'm not really a fan of like, going trick-or-treating but I sure do love um, decorating for it so this one and oh my gosh please forgive me if I say people's names wrong because I don't know yet I haven't heard enough cross stitching to get the name pronunciation correct but I'm gonna say Jarden Privy and it's called stitch stitch and forget the time um, it's got an adorable little witch. Love it. I did use the DMC. Um, no, I didn't. <laughs> I used my own version because they wanted me to use a dark brown and I thought, I don't want dark brown in that. So I used like this like grayish, greenish kind of color. Okay, I've had a lot of fun doing this one. Um, I find that it's very, um, obsessive, like you can't put it down. And then I started watching all of those floss tubers and they have so many neat things, but I don't know how they see it. 
I almost like feel like I need Braille or I need a seeing eye dog or something like that. And I got this great little board at Kimberly uh, Fat Quarter Shop, except I will tell you, I need something that stands up. Cause I'm always picking up like this and I am like, oh, I can't, I've been having back problems because I've been like trying to figure that out. And then I use these Lori Holt boards. Um, I made my own, um, there's a tutorial on the Fat Quarter Shop, how to make them and you can make them any size you want. I will tell you a little trick. Keep that glue on the fabric instead of putting it on your batting or you'll look like the Avon little snowman. Um, I had like tons of those. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to get a couple more because all these floss tubers have like 45 of them that they're working on and they're all kitted and ready. I mean, I have to follow along. As your mom says, you know, if everybody jumped off a bridge, would you? Yeah. Especially if it's cool stuff. I mean, come on. So. I made me a little project bag for my Halloween stuff. This is great Halloween fabric from Moda. And look at this. This pro Now, I know my project bag's big, so I've got to figure out how to cut down the pattern. But this is the whip pouch that um, there's a tutorial on for Kimberly Jolly. And I like the vinyl. So... When you open it up, you can, first of all, you can see what you got in there. Second of all, it's all nicely finished. Um, this is a new fabric from Moda. It's a new designer named Kathy Holden. Well, I don't know that she's a new designer. She's a new designer to Moda. And this is called, I've got so many of them going through my head, Flea Market Mix. This is a new line that I will be carrying and don't you love the recipes, the little tickets? Look at these florals. And there's so many different, and the buttons. Doesn't it look like you could pick up those buttons? This is when you purchase fabric um, lines. Sometimes they give you a mini ch uh, charm pack or something. So I decided I would start using those for my um, whip bags. So this is a good use for them. So I made two more of those because I thought, I need to get me something else to cross stitch, right? Because I'm sure I'll have this all whipped out and we'll have big tapestry panels on our walls. But it's good to dream. So I bought me some more Ada. And I have no clue. I'm still staying on 14 because I'm blind. But all of those other people... They're using these like 32 count whatever linen. I can't even imagine how they see with that. Um, I don't know. I need to find a friend who um, can help me out, can teach me. Um, I started watching Cross. What did I think it was? I thought I'll link it below, but I think it's Cross Hatch Quilts. Um, she's hilarious. I mean, she's like me, squirrel. That's what she keeps saying, and then she'll switch. But you know, we're all like that. Um, I think when you're creative, you start working on something, and you have a project, and you think, okay, I'm focused. I'm gonna get it done, but you don't. And um, that's my cat in the background. She wants to eat. Um. Then she gets squirrel, get to another project, you buy it, you get everything ready, you start working on that until you get another one. And that's why we can do whole videos on what we're doing and how much we still have to do. Um, Christy is her name, Cross Hatch Quilting. She loved the brain. I think it's called Menopause Brain. And I'm telling you, another group of women you sit and watch, um, Laura, and oh my gosh she's the serial starter and Brenda and Laura they are hilarious they live in Illinois I live in Ohio and I sent them a message and said I really think we would be best friends if we met those ladies are so funny and when I tell you talented 
I mean, like, I think I need to go stay with them for a weekend to learn how to cross stitch because those ladies work on such minute things and they're gorgeous. And like, they'll say, well, I worked on this for 30 minutes and they've got like this big massive thing already done. And you're like, when I work for 30 minutes, I have a little pumpkin. So I hope I get quicker at that too. Plus there's a new lot, a way to do cross stitch. When I was 10 or 11 cross stitching, you made each X, um, you'd go up and down, up and down. Now they do this thing that's called a um, sewing method where your, your needle never goes to the bottom. You just kind of, I don't know how you explained it. You'll have to look at, there's a couple tutorials on it. And um, so I made myself learn because they said that was quicker. And it is a lot nicer because your thread doesn't get stuck. Um, you know, before when you'd pull it through, it'd get all knotted up and you'd be like, great, now what? It doesn't get stuck like that when you do the sewing method. I think I'm getting ready to get a visit from my cat. But here's another one that I ordered. I ordered this pattern from Fat Quarter Shop. Let's Freedom Ring, and it's by Abby Rose Designs. I had this thought that um, since I'm getting ready to redecorate my house, I would have these like little either pillows or pen cushions and a pretty um, basket so that like, you know, you walk by, you look at them, or you can put different ones in there for different holidays. But I just love this patriotic, um, and there's so many beautiful ones. Christy from Cross, um, hatch quilting she's doing this big like lady of liberty and oh my gosh gorgeous gorgeous let's see i think that's all of my cross stitch that i bought i made little notes here i said that that one yeah that's it of the cross stitch and here's one they call their haul what they buy in a week this is what I bought this week, and this is from Kelly Fannin Quilts. And if you follow Kimberly Jolly, um, this lady is the one who she's doing the Harry Potter quilt along with. Um, I think people are done, but it's it's a big running joke when Kimberly does her Friday morning things. Everybody wants to know about how the um, Harry Potter quilt's going. So this is um, Kelly Fannin Quilts Designs. Romeo and Juliet. I'm making this a quilt. Now each quilt, let's see, there are many quilts, 21 by 24. So, you know, they would be cute for like outdoor little, you know, if you want to hang them on your porch or something like that or in your sewing room. But I'm going to make it a quilt. And I think I'm going to put the little Romeo on the side my husband sleeps on. <laughs> which we could put that on the very corner and then I would be in the middle and I think I'm going to do them. Um, well, she'll have black. I might use the black and white pen stripe for her braids for the gray, but I think I'm going to make them look like us and put them on like a king size quilt with um, maybe some type of polka dotted background and do um, little blocks here and there that I like. So I'm going to make this one. A king size so we'll see how that one goes I have large dreams but as soon as she introduced it I went that's got to go on my bed because I love gnomes you know and how classy is that who do you know that's gonna put gnomes on their bed but me and here's my great theory I'm gonna start redoing my house so that it's like a French country how many French country people do you see that have gnomes on their bed but she had a great little pen that went with it. So I had to order that because I love my gnomes. Love them. So now I have one other thing. I think it's one other thing I'm going to show you. This is, I don't even know if it's in here. I'll have to show that to you in another program or another video. This is uh, what I was going to tell you about is a friendship quilt that the ladies, um, that I met on a retreat and if you are someone who wants friends that does the same kind of um, 
crafts or extras that you do. Um, retreats are awesome to find people because um, you all have the same thing in common. It gives you great places to go and get away. And then when you meet friends from other states, you can definitely go and visit them and get away. So I have, I met um, Vicki who lives in Iowa. Um, I have Kelly that lives in Missouri, and that's usually where the retreat is um, with Angela at, uh, in Liberty, Missouri. And then there is Lori who lives in Texas. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, San Antonio. I could be wrong. Texas is large. And I know that she lives in the southern part of it, so we'll, we'll go with that. But these ladies, we meet up twice a year at least. And we get to sew together. We know each other's families and, and what's going on in their lives. So you meet really great friends and you stay in touch with them. And it just adds a lot to your life. So if you get the chance to go, you should. But we made a quilt uh, from Angela Walter's one of our first ones, it was called the Star Quilt. And you can see they're kind of... So what we did was we each took our favorite fabrics and we each made the center, or Vicki made the center, then we each made, um, out of our favorite fabrics, a star and a half. And so when we put it together, we put it like geographical, where we are in the country. So that one, I still need to, um, we signed them, so I'm going to take um, black thread and kind of go over our signatures so that they stay like a signature quilt. And it still needs to be um, quilted as well. So the next video, I'll just show you, um, maybe I'll hang it up behind me. That'll be a good one. So that is everything that I currently am working on and have them working on. I'd like to tell you that I did finish a block of the month. Um, it was from the quilt spot. If you have not ever, um, and you have not liked them on Instagram, you have to. The quilt spot is great for quilters. She has um, kits. She has um, blocks of the month sew alongs. And that way, I mean, you name it, any kind of uh, manufacturer, designer, she does the, you can better believe she'll have it. But I did one that was called the Stardust, and that'll be up there at some point. But it was from the Pinkerville from Tula Pink. And not that I was crazy about that line, but I bought the patch of the unicorn. Well, I bought two because I thought one for retirement, the second one I would make a quilt and put it on. So I did the, the sew along. Oh my gosh. When I finished that quilt, um, I got it all. It's all done. Um, it's the prettiest bright quilt. Uh, and then I put the patch on the back. It's great. I'm glad I did it, even though it wasn't like a fabric that I would have picked to make a whole quilt. I'm glad I made it. It was really cute. So sometimes, no matter how awkward a fabric looks, it can look good once it's quilted. So I'm sitting here and I'm looking through my list so I make sure I do everything with you. The two or three, I've got a quilt kit from Jen Kingswell and Anna Maria Horner that's called Golden Days. Each month, it came with a template. So you made the block, then you did the applique, and um, I haven't even touched it. I bought it two, almost three years ago. It's in my drawers. I really want to do it. And um, I also have the Lori Holtz Granny's Garden. I went and I bought all the fabric. I bought all the supplies, all the templates. I put it in two because there's so much fabric for it. Two of my little plastic boxes. That's what it's at. 
what the heck. So I've got to start that. And then have any of you guys ever done the Moto Blockheads? They are on their third season. And this is the first time I've been lucky enough to get in on like the beginning of it. So um, if you get on the Moto website, there's a whole thing under the uh, designers. It's called, it just says Moto Blockheads. I thought, I have got a ton of, of stash. And I'm going to just use my stash. That's what I'm going to do. Do you know how hard that is? I actually have a quilt. Or the stuff I bought to make a quilt that I decided not to make. And so I thought, well, I'll use that whole line. I mean, everything goes. It's got creams, it's got reds, burgundies, and everything in the middle. I can't make it go. I keep looking at these blocks and I'm like, I don't know what I want to use. So I told my husband, I came to a great... I don't know what you want to call it. Conclusion. I'm no longer buying stash. If I don't have a purpose for it, I'm not buying it. I used to buy stuff just because it was pretty. And you know what? You don't end up using it. So I'm looking at this blockheads. I want to make it. And I think, well, I should just go buy me a fat quarter bundle. Really? I can't even tell you how many fat quarter bundles I have in that room. Oh my gosh. So I'm selling all my stash. So in the next, I don't know, week on Instagram, finish a quilt, Jerry Lynn Birchwell, I'm selling the stash because it's stupid. Why would you keep all that? And I've got good stuff. I have Allison Glass, Amy Butler, um, Tula Pink. Um, I have different novelty fabrics that you, no, I'm getting rid of it. Because if you want to buy fat quarter bundles to make a scrappy quilt, you apparently don't like your your uh, stash. We'll see how much I clear out. I'll be like one of them hoarders. I'll be handing you a little piece of fabric like this. Here you go. So, well, I've talked your ear off. 37 minutes long. That is crazy. Oh, I did want to tell you about something. I got, and I did not bring it, on cross-stitch, I... Um, added my email to um and I don't know enough to give you the specifics so you're gonna be like why are you even rambling lady anyways I got the pattern for a Betty Glover 1837 I can't wait till I'm good enough to do that so if you know of anyone in the Ohio area that is a good cross stitcher that would like to educate someone who has menopausal dementia um, I would love to learn because I think, I don't know if it's the number of stitches that you make that makes you better. You know, like when you sew, um, quilts, the more quilts you do and the more mistakes you make, the better you become. I don't know if cross stitches like that. Um, there also has to be a great secret to how you can see <laughs> what you're cross stitching. Find those little holes in the linen. I don't know how, but. A little bit about me. I am finish a quilt slash Jerry Lynn Birchwell on almost every social platform. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and now YouTube. And I have a website, finishaquilt.com. My goal or my business is everything I've just talked to you about. I want to carry the fabrics that I love. You might like them, you might not. I like a very wide variety. Um, I like to carry notions and threads that I like. Um, I'm kind of like the guinea pig. I'll test it out, I'll see if I like it. If I like it, I'll carry it on my website. Um, I do have free shipping, anything over $75. I'm trying to think if there's anything else you if you would like to have me carry something specific or get you something specific, I can do that. But feel free to give me a call, email me, everything's on my website, or you can comment below because I'll be checking those out.
thank you so much for listening to me. And if you have any ideas of what we can call this quilting menagerie, let me know. We can't take floss too. It's already taken. Thanks. Have a great day.